Robbie. Wait, like a tutorial for work? Yes, yes, yes. If this is a tutorial, then why am I tied up? Todd? Is that you? No, no. I know that's you, Todd. Okay, if this is a tutorial, then what is it even about? How to light small spaces. It's the second time this week. Hey, what's up? It's Todd with Shutterstock, and today we're talking about how to light small spaces. Basically, how do you light a space that is so small that you can't really hide any light stands or modifiers in the scene without them being picked up by the camera? And to do that, I wanted to shoot in the smallest space possible. So I'm in this little, this is like probably like a four foot by four foot little closet of an office. And I'm on an extremely wide lens. I've got the Laowa 7.5 millimeter. So, I mean, check this thing out. Super wide and you know, it's so wide that uh, right there's the boom mic. I couldn't find a good place to hide it. So there's the boom mic. It's in the shot and it's really bothering me. So to light a small space, uh, especially, you know, intentionally and in a way that you can control, there are a few things that you just have to have in your back pocket. Number one is practicals. If you don't know what a practical is, it's basically just any sort of light that actually plays in your scene. It's basically a part of your scene or your set design. Now these come in handy big time in a small space. So boom, right here, that's a practical, it's a lamp just you know providing some nice warm ambience to the room giving me a little bit of side light here a lot of times a practical in a scene is kind of the first stroke of your paintbrush in the case of the kind of dungeon scene with robbie at the beginning of this video I knew I wanted kind of a grungy looking fluorescent fixture to be the main practical in the scene. And so like I said, that was the first light that I placed. That way I could kind of get a sense of how everything might end up looking. <laughs> and the fixture that I used was a Quasar Science LED tube. So if you're not already familiar with what a quasar tube is, it's these guys. This is just basically a replacement for a standard fluorescent light bulb. And what's really, really cool about them is they're LED and they can go straight into a standard fluorescent fixture. And one of the best parts to me is that they're actually really affordable. This is only about 75 bucks for one of these. They've taken the lighting world by storm and you see them everywhere like music videos, commercials, and obviously in film as well. And that brings me to the next thing I want to talk about, hideable lights. One of the best things that you can have in your arsenal are some low profile lights that you can hide anywhere. So now there are a lot of lights on the market that are flexible. A lot of times you get like a one-to-one -one panel, uh, just like you would, you know, a standard LED light. You get the square, but it's flexible. So you can, you can do all kinds of crazy stuff. You can gaff tape it to a wall. You can roll it up in a ball. And another side of the hideable light spectrum is, you know, all these great, super bright, tiny little lights. You know, you've got all of the various uh, aperture lights like the ALMX, ALMW. I'm actually being lit right now by an Amaran F1 as my backlight. It's just a really nice uh, new sort of thing where you're getting a lot of really bright output from these really small portable battery powered lights and that didn't used to be the case. And in the case of the dungeon scene, we use quite a few little hideable lights. One of the main lights in the scene was the Aperture ALMW, which is the Aperture battery powered light that has built in effects. And in this case, I used the faulty bulb effect setting. And to provide a little bit of fill light, I used a Falconize RX24 TDX, which is a flexible LED panel that's bicolor and has 
lots of really great features. It's dimmable and it comes with a remote that you can use to change the color temperature and the intensity without ever needing to leave the set. And unfortunately in one shot, this light was actually visible as a reflection in Robbie's glasses. And so as the rules go, I am now forced to throw my camera in the trash can. And finally, I wanted a little bit of extra hair light in the scene or backlight. And to pull that off, I used one of these tiny little Aperture AL M9 lights. They're battery powered, they're really small, and you can stick them about anywhere. And I just kind of wedged it into this rickety old fan that was on the ceiling. And the third thing I want to talk about is control. So when you're in a small space, it's really frustrating the light because the smallest little bit of light is gonna bounce around everywhere. I mean, in here, I have the one key light and it's just bouncing off this back wall. You're getting kind of a shine on the door that I don't like. The biggest thing that you need to kind of learn how to do is control the light that you have. And probably the main way to do that is with dimmers. I like to keep everything on a dimmer as much as possible, especially in a small space. And for this scene, literally every single light was dimmable. From all of the battery powered LED lights to the quasar and the flex panel, everything was dimmable. And for the quasar, I had someone off camera subtly fluctuating the dimmer switch to give the light kind of that flickery look. And if you'd like to learn how to make a dimmer switch of your own, Logan made a video that shows you how to do it. So check that out. And as kind of a bonus tip, before all of these flexible LED lights and really bright battery powered lights, we're on the market. This right here used to be my favorite way to light a small space. This is called a Source 4, also known as a Leco light. You see these used in stage lighting uh, scenarios all the time. Usually they're hung upside down on a stage pin. This is an ellipsoidal light. It has a lens in it. One, it throws light a very long distance. So if you need to put a stand with a light outside of your location and shoot light into it, you can control the light really, really well and get full output into the room. And with these lights, the lenses are removable and they all have different beam angles. But probably to me, the best thing about these lights is they have these little shutters on the sides. So with these shutters, you can actually cut a specific shape out of the light. So it's really good for a small space because you can just basically cut the light into like almost like a you know, two by three or four by four, big kind of block of light in a small location. You can buy them on eBay usually for, you know, around two to three hundred dollars. Um, these are probably my favorite light that has ever existed and I use them all the time. So anyways, I hope you found this video helpful. If there are any techniques that you like to use to light small spaces, let me know in the comments and be sure to like and subscribe. Tell us how we're doing, all that kind of stuff. And in the words of one of our favorite commenters, be well and stay encouraged.